Okay, there you go, Grandma. You can start. Okay, I have Lydia here wanting to know about me and my life. I was born November 13th, 1940. My parents had just lost two children before I was born. They already had my older sister named Dorothy, and then they had a little boy, Max, who drowned when he was 19 months old. And then a year or so later, my mother had another little girl, and she only lived an hour or two, and then she died. So there's seven years between my older sister and myself. I imagine I was spoiled a lot because there was another nine years that went by before my mother was able to have another baby, a little girl named Winona. I grew up in Highland, Utah. In my estimation, it was the middle of nowhere. There were 30 families that lived in the area and most of us were related. Our house was a four room house I was lucky enough to have electricity, but we had no bathroom, no furnace, no telephone. Sometimes we had running water, but most of the time we didn't. My dad would have to walk several, through a field, maybe several blocks worth to get buckets of water for us to drink, cook, and wash clothes with. We had our baths and little tin tubs. Uh, the youngest got to go in first, and my dad would always have to take the last bath. Okay, I started it again. I don't remember um, I'm 80 years old, and I'm having a tough time remembering clear back when I was young but I have written my life story up till when I got married that can be read. Uh, we had 13 acres. My dad grew wheat, so we would have flour and alfalfa to feed the cows. But we had cows that he milked and had the pay to feed them, and then they would take the wheat to the uh, Intermountain farmers who would grind the wheat, and then mom and dad would pick up a bag when we ran out. My mother made bread all the time. We lived on um, uh, whole wheat cereal. We called it mush. My mother and dad had learned to not eat sugar during the war years, so there was no no sugar. We had to dish a mush with some milk on it every morning for our breakfast. On the weekends, though, we would have a roast beef dinner. As my dad would have two cows, one to milk and one to kill, for us to eat. And I was embarrassed when I went to school because I had to take homemade bread with a roast beef on it, where my friends got to have store-bought bread with bologna on it. Is that very pop culture? You have to tell them about your pop culture and your, you have to tell them the plane stories about the planes. <laughs> yes, uh, the war, going back to the war, I remember sitting on the steps in front of our house, and my dad and I watched plane after plane after plane fly over our house for a day or two of all the boys coming home from fighting in the service. I lived through the fields. On the other side was my grandma and grandpa. Their youngest child was my age. Her name was Miriam, and we loved to play together. Uh, there was a boy that lived on the other side of the field. His name was Jimmy, and we liked to play together and pretend uh, house, play house and be the mom and dad. I had fun years growing up there in that little house. 
There was, like I say, four rooms, a kitchen, a bedroom, two bedrooms, and a front room. Later, my dad added, added on a, a room at the back of the house where we kept the freezer and the washing machine. But once again, my dad had to carry water to go in the washing machine. We had a well out back. Sometimes it had water in it and sometimes it didn't. We had a hot water heater. Sometimes there was hot water in it because we had to build a fire to heat the water because we had no electricity, no furnace, no gas in the house. Uh, my mother did a lot of bottling, but as I say though, we were lucky enough to have uh, electricity in the home, come to think of it. So she did have an electric stove and we did have a small refrigerator to keep the food in and later put a freezer in the back room. And then she did have a electricity to wash the clothes. Um, I enjoyed swimming in the canal, wading in the ditch. We liked to go along outside and to play in the dirt and build little farms, we'd call them, where we'd mold mud and dirt around areas to designate the house and the farms and the barns. Oh, and by the way, we did have chickens. They produced chickens once in a, they produced eggs once in a while. And when they, they didn't produce eggs, we didn't eat eggs. So to this day, I love eggs that we can buy them and have them. Uh, we had on this 13 acres, we had a garden spot that we raised all kinds of fruits and vegetables that mother would bottle and put up. Do you? Uh, mother wasn't too much on, my, my mother was the type that would rather do it herself. So I really felt like I didn't know how to cook or clean when I got married. I, uh, my job was to bring in the coal and empty the pot. That was what we called the thing that slid under the bed that we used in the middle of the night because our toilet was quite a ways away from the house. And uh, then I, my other job was to wipe down the mop boards at the bottom of the floor. I learned to knit and crochet and loved to read and spent most of my time doing that. Do you think you were an easy kid? Oh, I was the most obedient child, but I think my parents were, I'm sure, very good to me. Were you more obedient than you think Dorothy and Winona, your sisters? Uh, yes, I had my dad wrapped around my little finger. <laughs> I loved my dad very, very much, and we had a good relationship. Winona, Winona had quite a, uh, ideas of her own, and I think my sister liked to maybe sneak away and do things, but I was the obedient child. Oh. And, and I say I don't like it. But on the other hand, when I look back at my childhood, you know, I had my cousins to play with. We had uh, streams to wade in and, and put ponds that we'd go swimming in. and and the church was our whole existence. We did everything at, at the church house, at parties and dances and everything else when I was a teenager. But I had to, I would, had to ride the school bus to school, which I didn't like. And this was more in my teenage years because I wanted to be involved in things at school, mm -hmm. but I didn't have a way to get home if I missed the bus. And uh, gas station called Johnny's Gas Station, which was, I'm sure, a 
five or six mile walk. And maybe once a summer we'd walk over so we could buy a candy bar. But you just had one candy bar? I just loved, love it when I got married and moved in Holiday and there was the library and the post office and the grocery store just a block away from us. We could go so close to all these things. And now later my daughters have ticket for health theater that, you know, get those things in yeah. small country. In Levan there's not even a McDonald's. Yeah. I just say, you know, if, if they've got a McDonald's, they probably have everything. Yeah. And if they don't have a McDonald's, they have nothing. What am I talking about now? Your, uh, I, your, your mom, not, yeah, I grew. I feel like I grew up in the middle of nowhere because there were no stores that close by. I had to ride the bus to school. And when I was older and wanted to be in after school activities, I couldn't because I then I wouldn't have a way to get home. And uh, and uh, now my husband says to me, "Let's move to Levan, which is." the same as the middle of nowhere to me because they have no McDonald's and then okay do you remember like go do you remember the first movie you went out to see you know I was lucky you gonna do this or not yeah oh I was lucky that my dad liked movies and we'd mm -hmm. go to the movie probably every week and there were three different movie theaters, one in Lehigh, one in American Fork, and one in Pleasant Grove. So depending on what movie we wanted to see, we would go to do that. But even in American Fork, there were no restaurants to go eat. If we ever would do a restaurant, which maybe would be on mom and dad's wedding anniversary, we had to go to Provo to Parks Cafe. And if you can imagine, there were just no fast food places to go eat. It was just yeah, crazy. So. There were no TV, but we did have a radio. Oh, so you'd listen had to no telephone. Video shows. Yeah, it, it was quite the thing. So after school you went and listened to the radio? Yeah, after school we'd listen. Have the Well, we'd have the times that we would have a program that we wanted to listen to, but we didn't have to. I didn't listen. I don't know. That they even had stations that played music the whole time. Yeah, they just did I stories. just know that we knew what time we wanted to listen to the radio. There was Lux Theater that they would, you would listen to them do a story. There was my friend Irma. I loved that. There was, oh, I think, some mysterious show. I forget. The Creaking Door or something. But we knew what time they started, and we uh, scheduled ourselves to be right there, laying on the floor in front of the radio to listen to the program. Yeah. Did you... So your mom always told you you were smart, huh? Because you were, you were obviously really smart. Because you did yeah, I... you read a lot, and... I guess with my sister Dorothy, I don't know that we played that much together. I was just seven years younger than I was just a kind of a little pest to get in her way, but she did play school with me, so I did learn to read and write the little three letter words that, so that when I did go to school, I knew some of those things. And then my time in life, there was no such thing as kindergarten. So I got to go to first grade, and then the teacher says, Eloa knows everything that we have to teach. We'd like to put her in third grade. So I was moved to third grade, which I was not happy about because I had so many good friends in first grade. And I loved to be with my Aunt Miriam, who, my, my mother's very youngest sister. And that put us apart, and when I started in third grade, I just felt so out of place and didn't feel like I had any friends for a long, long 
many, many years. How many people gone. went to your elementary school, do you think? Oh, we had, I'm sure we had 20, 30 kids in classrooms. Really? So Highland was the small, small place, but we went to American Fort to go to school, and that was a booming community. So you had, you had to drive, how, how far did you have to drive to go to school every day? It was four, three, four miles is how far the bus took us. Oh, it's pretty, pretty cool. Okay, so overall, how was childhood? Do you think you had the best childhood? Oh, I think I had a really good childhood. I, I had a lot of fun memories growing up. We had a lot of good things happen to us. Um, my mother made our birthdays and Christmas is absolutely wonderful. Uh, just was a good, good way to grow up and be able to keep the commandments of the Lord. The church was the most important thing in our lives and our whole life was based around the, the go, going to church and, and helping with whatever the church needed. They built a new church building and my father spent a lot of his evenings helping to build that church. Yeah. Do you wish you could live back over in this area? Would you, if you could like change the time of when you were born, would you, would you be born now or do you like when you were born? I, I like where grandpa grew up here on holiday oh. because they were kind of a little community where everybody was related. But they just lived a block away from a movie theater mm -hmm. and a restaurant and a, a donut shop and a grocery store. And yeah. do, you, do you wish that you grew up with electronics like we do? Or do you, do you like that the fact that you just had a radio? Yeah, the radio was just fine. I, you don't fancy the electronics? I, I, uh, I can appreciate that we had to figure out how to play and what to do with ourselves rather than all, all the kids know now is electronics. So yeah, that's why, that's why I learned to knit and crochet. And I read many, many books I love to read. Mm -hmm. and, and there was not a whole lot of housekeeping for my mother with three girls. We didn't make messes in the house. We weren't allowed to eat in between meals. We, uh, uh, mother, you know, made very simple dishes. So she didn't do a lot of swanky cooking or anything to mess up anything, so. Yeah, do you wish your, do you think your dad wished that he had a boy instead of some three girls? Oh, it broke my mother's heart that the little boy named Max drowned when he was 19 months old. And then she had a lot of miscarriages and she never did get another little boy. And when I started dating my husband, Ray, he was the son to my father. He would take him fishing and help him fix a car that needed fixed and help do repairs around the house. And, invited him to go on vacations with us. He, my dad surely did love my husband Ray because he was so good to him. Okay. My dad was the oldest in his family. So when Max died, that ended that Roger's name because he died and us three girls took on different names. And when I had my first child named Craig, we said to my dad, what name would you like to add to this? And he said, Rogers, as fast as he could. He didn't have to think about it. But so we have Craig Rogers Phillips and several of my grandchildren have Rogers for their middle name, but that Rogers stopped there. And my dad accepted the death of my brother Max, but my mother never got over it because she was washing dishes and had a feeling to go 
check on Max, and she didn't. So she had to live with that sorrow all her life that she didn't go check on him, and he'd wandered off and drowned. Until next time, right now we're going to have some banana bread. Bye-bye.